content creator and the founder of Joey G113, Joey Garrity. I worked in the Hollywood entertainment industry for 15 plus years at top companies in film, television, original web content, and brand entertainment. Every episode, I start by sharing a Hollywood story along with a superstar branding and marketing strategy and tip that you can implement quickly and easily so you can take your biz to superstar status on the Red Carpet Guide to Branding and Marketing Live. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Red Carpet Guide to Marketing and Branding Live with Joey. I'm content creator Joey Garrity, and you can learn more about me at joeyg113.com and um, more about my products and services. Here you go. So today, um, it's part two of how to include your ideal client into your company brand. I have lots and lots of information on this, so I wanted to make it a two-part series and share this with all of you. I always start with the Hollywood story. So let me just recap um, from part one. So it's once once you get going in Hollywood, people tend to know you, the marketplace, your ideal client, it's the same thing, right? Knows you and is emotionally connecting with you and therefore they love what you're doing and they're buying tickets to come to your movie, you know, go to the movies or stream your series or, um, you know, buy, license all of the comic book stuff, what, whatever it is. So it's not unusual, though, for someone that is all of a sudden soaring higher and higher to maybe want to take a left turn and not and get away from. And so by taking a left turn, for instance, let's just say it is a writer and they write thrillers, right? And now they've written several thrillers and the marketplace knows them for it and the studio systems know it for it, the agents know it for it, know them for it. And they come in and now they pitch a romantic comedy. What do you think happens to the audience out there about their ideal client? Do you think that their ideal client's buying into it? Or do you think that their ideal client is now having a wonky time with them and not knowing, liking, and trusting them? Yes, it's B. Okay. And it can be so severe sometimes that it could literally close their doors. And it could hurt their career for a very, very long time. And so as an entrepreneur, for instance, I want you to be thinking about your ideal client and who you are speaking to out there. And so I want you to be clear about how you're speaking with them. And today I'm going to be sharing some signature tips of how they can see how your ideal client can see themselves in your company brand. So, but let's do some for instance. So let's say that you are a consultant and you are a business consultant out there. And that's what you've been, that's, that's your ideal client is people out there that want your consulting about business from you. That's your ideal client. And so you've been building that for the last couple of years or for years even. And all of a sudden you take a life turn, a left turn, and you start sending out a signal and talking to your supposed ideal client, right? That, you no longer are doing business. Instead, you want to sell them a network marketing um, product, right? Let's say it's skincare. And now what do you think your ideal client is thinking to themselves? Wonky, and it can really hurt your no like, and trust. And that's not that you can't sell, right, a, a network marketing skincare. I'm not saying that. You can, but it has to be done in a way where under maybe a particular division, and it has to make sense to your ideal client out there, and you have to have clarity around that, right? So I want you to think about your brand like your studio. Let's just say that you're Paramount or Warner Brothers, right? Paramount and Warner Brothers has divisions, right? And in those divisions, though, it all makes sense. They don't sell insurance in those divisions. They don't sell medical care in those divisions because that wouldn't make sense underneath the media empire umbrella. Instead, though, they sell, they do have divisions that make sense underneath it that still drives back to the heartbeat of the actual umbrella itself. Now, if you are a consultant out there and you want to start, you want to add to your portfolio, which is a division, and you want to start selling skincare, network marketing skincare, bravo. But as long as it comes back to the clarity around the brand to your, and makes sense to your ideal client. 
For me, for instance, I'm on shows all the time. <laughs> I have shows, I do shows, I get interviewed on shows. And so my skincare is a big part of my brand. And so I have a division around skincare because it's all about visibility and influence with me. And I'm helping women entrepreneurs in particular get more buzz out there in the marketplace. And one of my divisions is guess what? Live shows, the live stream world, right? And so it makes sense that I'm talking about your face recognition, which goes back to skincare, okay? So I hope that that helps a little bit. So I want you to sit down and I want you to look at your umbrella first and then your ideal client, and then how you are talking to them out there. So to, in today's episode, I want to talk about how they are, how your ideal client is recognizing you out there in the marketplace and how what kind of signals are you giving out there in the marketplace that, that they are buying into. We all have signals we're sending out there. We do. It's a signal just like the signal I shared earlier, where someone was sending a signal as a writer in Hollywood that they were a thriller writer, and now they wanted to shift the signal to comedy, uh, romantic comedy, which is possible. However, it causes a lot of lack, no, and trust aspect. And so the way that you have to do it is you have to be strategic. And so if they had an umbrella, for instance, and it was a production umbrella where they had divisions and that they were known for character development, now they could have a division under thriller and comedy, romantic comedy, okay? Makes sense, right? Because they have a heartbeat, which they're known about character, about building out characters, and they have two different divisions. And so that that would make sense. But if they've been writing thrillers, right, for years, and now they're going into pitching romantic comedies, imagine what it's doing to their careers. It's not helping, right, right? Unless they set it up properly. And I'm asking you to do the same. Okay, you wanna look at what signals you're sending out to the marketplace, because I promise you, you are. And here's another thing too. How are you leveraging your marketing shares out there in the marketplace? for to call on your ideal clients. It's something I want you to be thinking about. As a matter of fact, that should be your only strategy. If you are selling to women entrepreneurs like myself, right, then I'm not going to have imagery of male entrepreneurs. I'm not going to speak in my, I'm not going to share written or video testimonials by men. That just wouldn't make any sense, right? No, no, not at all. In the past, and I in the, in the past, I've worked with men, so I've scraped all those testimonials. However, I do have a division underneath my umbrella because I am a media girl that is for Hollywood clients um, only. So I work with Hollywood clients in that division, right? I do work with male directors, but with the heartbeat around the visibility and influence again. And it's only for that division, for the Hollywood for the Hollywood division underneath the umbrella though. And that Hollywood division has its own everything, right? I don't mix the two up, right? And I do, but but there are most, let's get real. There's, there's more up and coming women directors out there, but there's a lot of male directors down there, right? And so, um, and, but it's just for that division. But on a whole, my umbrella, right? At, support because it supports media visibility and influence is specifically for women entrepreneurs in every other division. So I make sure that I share marketing images that are of women. I make sure that my written and my video testimonials that go out there are women, right? Women entrepreneurs, specifically women entrepreneurs, right? And so I want you to be thinking this way too. And again, you can learn more about my products and my services at www.joeyg113.com. And um, you can learn about my books there. I've got two books. I've got The Red Carpet Guide to Visibility and Influence, and I've got Being Your Own Superstar, How to Expand Your Love Capacity. You can get both of these on Amazon. This, this book is Inner Game, 
And I have an entire system in here. It doubles as a guidebook of how you can grow your inner game so you can go next level in your in the marketplace and in your biz. And this is all about branding and marketing and social media and also doubles as a guidebook so that you, by the time you're done, you'll have a robust um, branding, marketing, and social media strategy and plan. So I want to talk about... Um, the super red carpet strategy right now I want to talk about is um, incorporating your ideal client in your company brand with intake forms. I love myself an intake form, right? Because guys and gals out there, it only takes one ideal, un, one unideal client to take down your entire company brand. It's true. Because when you have a miserable experience, what do you want to do? Close your doors, right? because it makes you so emotionally unhappy, right? And so we wanna make sure you're only calling in your ideal client. An intake form can help you identify that. If a person really is your ideal client, and you wanna incorporate questions that help you to recognize if that person is right fit for you and your ideal client. So here's a couple questions that I ask, right? First of all, I ask if they're a woman entrepreneur, unless it's my Hollywood division, but if they're a woman entrepreneur, so that has to check mark. Yes, that's the first thing. The next thing I ask is I ask what, from a scale of one to 10, how fast do they make it a decision? 10 being the highest and one being the, the lowest, right? Why is that question important to me for my ideal client? Because I love to work with people that are, fast that that make quick decisions i don't like to work with people that are and there's nothing wrong with that because there's plenty of coaches consultants that that that's a good fit for but i'm saying the right fit for me right for an ideal client is someone that can make quick decisions someone that let, likes to move quickly that wants to move through the process that doesn't want to kick the rock around forever i call it kicking the rock around um and likes to jump off cliffs right because i love to do big buzz worthy um, strategies and techniques and get people out there and really grow their brand and their visibility influence because it's directly linked to the earning power. Right. And so that's one of my main questions. And if I see someone that gives one or two, I have no problem introducing them to someone else that I know that they would be a better fit for it. But for me, I want someone that can make really quick decisions. Also, it's a great way for you to collect information right off the bat. So if they are your ideal client, that now you already have all their information. You've got their email address, their contact number, right? You have their business title, their business name. These are questions that I ask. You also, I also ask for people's birth day and birth month. I love doing gratitude marketing. Um, and I think it's fun. I think it's exciting out there, right? And so um, I want you to be thinking in those terms. And so I've already have all that. So if I onboard them, right, because I'm my ideal client, I don't need to be tedious and go back because I like people to make quick decisions like me. I'm very quick, right? I like to go that I already have it and I can set up all their information and be very organized in my Trello. I talked about Trello on, on my last episode, so you can check all that out. And I set it up and they have all their information right there. And then we can jump in and we can get going. And if for some reason that they don't say yes, even though they're your ideal client, now you have their email address and you can put them in your email marketing campaigns um, and you can stay in touch and be at the top of know, like, and trust. Also too, I also make sure that I get their social media handles so that I can become um, friends with them on Facebook or on LinkedIn, um, Instagram, um, and what else do I use? I don't use Twitter. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> it's just not my game, right? So use what you like, right? So I love LinkedIn and Facebook. And there's another way where I can put them into an emotional connection because I'm going to be sharing written testimonials. Video, I, I mean, I share written testimonials, video testimonials, my personal, my professional journey, and I do marketing campaigns that are all signaling out to my ideal clients. And so at least if they're not ready, then at least that I have a touch point with them. So do the same. Okay. All right. So another red carpet strategy is sharing your brand story is a great way to incorporate your ideal client into your company brand. 
Okay. Your brand story. When I first was encouraged to share my brand story, I thought it would be so boring. I'm like, who wants to hear about Hollywood? Seriously. Like I worked there. <laughs> right. I mean, it was, it was so indoctrinated. It was just like a second skin at that point. I, I was there for 15 plus years already. Right. Um, before I went down a second time. Um, and work there again. Um, but what I want to say about it is your brand story is really interesting and it helps your ideal clients to emotionally connect with you. So don't leave out your past. Don't leave out how you got to where you are today. Don't leave any of that out for someone because you don't know who you're going to be emotionally connecting with out there with your ideal client. Let's just say in the past, let's just say this, that you were, you worked for in a government agency. Let's just say that. Okay. And, but you never talked about it, even though that's a big part of your brand story, right? Because there were techniques, tools, and strategies and tips and learning curves that you learned there. It's just why you're doing what you're doing today. There's no way you could do it without your past, right? And by pulling it forward, you, what you're doing is you're gaining no like and trust in the marketplace. So people are like, wow, you work for a government agency? We know how hard that is. Like, good for you, sister or brother. Like, all right. Also too, they're like, they have a past. Wow, I don't wanna work with someone that's a greenhorn. That doesn't interest me at all, right? Love that they have a past, right? Maybe your ideal client that you know, you're know you itching to work for used to work in a government agency too. What is that gonna do? Emotionally connect you to immediately. They're gonna wanna, they know they're gonna be able to talk to you. Also too, by sharing your past, they know that by you sharing your past that they can share their past, right? I see way too many entrepreneurs and business owners trying to hide their past. I'm like, why? Unless you're in jail or you were a prisoner, right? That might be not be something I'd be spotlighting a whole lot. But other than that, right, you don't want to hide what you used to do, right? It And this whole shame and blame thing about people getting laid off, I said, that had nothing to do with you, right? If a brand comes in and they lay, lay off, like, you know, hundreds of thousands of people, that has nothing to do with you. Or if they laid off 10 people, it doesn't matter, right? But you still put in time and energy into that component of your life. And so I want you to pull it forward and I want you to share why, what you learned, how this is a very unique and, and important component to what you are doing now. And it really elevates you out there in the marketplace because it's interesting. People want to hear about other people. That's why reality shows do so well, whether you like reality or not, right? I actually believe that us live streamers, we're the new reality real stars, right? And so we need, so we're being authentic with our storytelling, right? Share your story, right? Share it, right? I could have left the Hollywood in the past, right? Even though a lot of people say, why would you do that? That's crazy. I'm like, it's like anything, right? You get burnt out on things, right? You don't want to talk about it anymore, right? And I was like, no, I'm going to bring it with me because I paid my dues. There's probably not, there's probably only 1% of the entire globe that's worked in Hollywood like I have, right? With the studios and movies and television, brand and entertainment with the masters and mentors and the superstars, right? That I have. And so I'm not going to leave it in the behind. I'm not going to focus on it 24 hours either because I'm on a journey now, right? But I want you to pull that brand story and I want you so that you can emotionally connect with people out there. Another great way of doing this is with is to, sh to shine with your brand journey is to include your, how your ideal the client can work with you is through imagery, right? As you are sharing your brand journey, right? Maybe you're sharing about like I, so for instance, I worked with a client who's amazing by the way. And she wanted to, um, she needed to raise some money for a project she was working on. And so I jumped in with her and we started, you know, figuring out ways of strategizing and buzzing her out there on social media and getting, you know, really working and leveraging her visibility and influence out there. And she did, and she raised what she needed in order for the project to go live. And it was very interactive. People on social media could participate. They would, 
you know, gain and win things when they participated and on and on and on. What was interesting about it though, is that it, 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 it allowed the marketplace to emotionally connect and really cheerlead her on, right? And that's a great story. And so what we were doing is as people were coming, as they were onboarding, we were spotlighting them on her social media. So now I was emotionally connecting. Now her other ideal client that wanted to cheer her on and help along the way could see themselves in the brand story itself. It's a very interesting way of, of emotionally connection, connecting with the marketplace out there, right? Through imagery, right? And so imagery, imagery is, imagery is a very good way of emotionally connecting with your ideal client. I have a certain style about me. I have a way that I like to integrate with the marketplace. You can see it on my cover, the red carpet guide to visibility influence. This is very much my style. So what kind of ideal clients do you think I'm calling in? Probably not, probably not the gen, probably not necessarily millennials or people that are, I mean, my ideal client tends to be a little bit classic, right? And we tend, we, cause remember your ideal client's usually a little bit like minded like yourself. Right. And so they can see me out there. Also too, you can see on my, through my imagery, what am I doing? Spotlights. There's spotlights everywhere. What am I saying to people out there? What signal am I saying to people out there? Plus I put myself, plus I put myself, plus I put myself on my cover. What am I saying to people out there? I'm saying to my ideal client, I see you. It is your birthright to be your own superstar and stand in your spotlight. So what kind of signal and what kind of ideal client am I calling in? People that are ready or at least willing to stand into a bigger spotlight. So most likely my ideal client isn't going to be someone that just started their business a month ago, right? Because they're just getting going. Instead, I'm talking to people that are a little bit more mature, have a more mature business already. They're rock and rolling. They want to take their business next level because I want to buzz them out, right? I want to, I want to grow their vis visibility and influence. I don't work on, I'm not a business coach. See, that would be a left turn if I started calling me a, myself a business coach, huh? Right? If I started saying I was a business coach, what would that do to the marketplace out there? Because I'm not a business coach, right? I, I probably could be. I just, that's not my purpose, right? And so, what, what I'm saying to people out there is I'm like, if you want more visibility influence, if you're a woman entrepreneur, if you're ready to step into your spotlight, if you're ready to go next level, then you're my ideal client, right? And how do you know? Because of the imagery that I'm putting out there, right? And, and by putting myself on the cover, what am I saying out there? I'm saying, are you ready to step into a much bigger visibility influence spotlight like I am? Because if you are, I'm someone that you should work with. Are you ready to get more marketing and more strategies and more techniques and stand in a spotlight and get out of the shadows? Then I'm your girl and you're my ideal client. I know this might seem simple, but it's not. You want to be adding imagery out there. And the, and the imagery that you add out there is a great way for your clients to know that they're your ideal clients. So my next red carpet strategy is this. I want you to spotlight one of your ideal clients once a week, right? It's a great way of turning up the spotlight on your ideal client and other ideal clients seeing themselves in your company brand. Also, too, you're going to tag them. What do we do when we tag them? I know I've said this several times. I'm going to say it again. You get in their backyard with people that know, like, and trust them. So what are they going to think about? What are they going to say? Oh, well, if they know, like, and trust Joey or you, right? Then maybe I should know, like, and trust them too. At least it's opening the door and getting things going. But once a week, I want you to spotlight one of your ideal clients. It's also a great way of being generous, right? Who doesn't like being spotlighted, right? It's a great way of being generous with the with the influence that we've been building online, right? I love spotlighting others. It's my favorite, one of my favorite things to do, right? And the reason I've been building my online influence, the, the real, the strategy, the real reason is because 
I want to give it to other people, right? Just like a studio. Paramount and Warner Brothers is literally handing people, right, their influence. They're like, here, we've been building it. Now we're going to give it to you because we want you to be successful. When they close a production deal with someone, when they close a deal with a writer, when they close a deal with a TV director, when they close a licensing deal, whatever they're closing, right? They're also like, I'm going to hand you my influence. That is a huge reason why I've been building my influence. So the Joey G113, which I consider a studio, I can hand it to my ideal clients out there. And so by spotlighting them, I can get them into bigger backyards with my influence. And then again, I'm in their backyard. So what is it really? It's a win-win, right? So by, by you spotlighting your ideal client every week, it helps Marketplace to clearly see who and how you're working with them and what the outcome is right? What they can expect by working with you. By spotlighting an ideal client in my network, for instance, in my, in my network, my media network, right? What am I saying? I'm like, oh yeah, I want you to do, like, why shouldn't you have your own show? Why shouldn't you have your own show, right? If I'm spotlighting someone, for instance, in a blog post or an article, or I'm spotlighting um, someone, um, I do magazines, let's say, right? What am I saying to people? I'm saying, listen, this person is amazing. But what also is it saying about me? It's saying this person no likes and trusts me and is working with me. And here's what they do. And here's what I'm doing for them. Therefore, this is what your outcome can be as well. Right? So I hope this is making makes sense. Right? You want to, you want to be, you want to, in order to incorporate your ideal client into your company brand, you have to find as many ways as incorporating your current ideal clients into your company brand. Then it sends out a signal. It shows your other potential ideal clients that they could be working with you. I do not believe in chasing clients. Don't you stop chasing clients. Instead, incorporate your current ideal clients in your corporate, into your company brand. Be clear about what kind of ideal client you want to be working with in your social media and your marketing out there in the marketplace, right? And do it in these and do it in different ways and be pounding the marketplace as many different ways as possible so that your ideal clients can see you and just ask to work with you. Isn't that like the golden ticket, right? And by tagging your ideal clients, then you're already so y'all, it's actually the, or it's actually an organic funnel and it's better than a funnel in my opinion, because you don't have to drive the traffic to come in, to opt in, to go to this next gig, to get down these funnels. Right. I don't, I personally don't believe in funnels. If you do, and you do that for a living, like that's fabulous and good for you. It just, it's just not my style. That's all. Instead, I've turned these strategies and these techniques into, into funnels essentially. And essentially it's a funnel right? Tagging someone, right? Incorporating my ideal clients so other ideal clients could see themselves in, in, in my brand. That's a funnel, but it's very organic, right? And I like that. And by doing it with the spotlight component, it's even, it's fun. It's fun. Who doesn't want to be spotlighted, right? You've made their day. And in the algorithms, you've really made everyone's day because when you tag someone, right? and you share it, right? You're hitting higher algorithms out there for yourself and when they share it for you, right? And so again, it's this win-win. So I want you to step back and I want you to think of other ways of how to do this, right? Listen, until next time, I thank you so much for joining me today. You guys have been a wonderful audience like, like usual. I will see you next time on the Red Carpet Guide to visibility and influence. And until then, ciao everyone. Thank you for joining me today. You can learn more about me, my products and services at joeyg113.com. Make sure to join me for another episode every week on the Red Carpet Guide to Branding and Marketing Live.